All right, it's Monster Bass time. This is the June Monster Bass Top Water Box. Um, kind of pretty hyped about this. Um, I'm kind of a big fan of Top Water, uh, so let's see what we got. All right, first up, we got our booklet that shows us how to fish each thing. So we'll just kind of flip through here and talk about each bait as we go through it. Why not? That seems pretty reasonable. Because in here, it tells you like gear suggestions of what type of pole and line to use, um, locations where you're going to use it, and the best way to use it. Um, the best technique for retrieving it, all that good stuff. So, let's uh, start out. It's the Yozuri pencil bait. There we go. Oh. Yozuri baits are pretty sweet. Pretty heavy guy, too. Nice, solid knock pencil bait so you just kind of take it across the surface it's got a nice flasher inside there um, this is 9 16 of an ounce it's four inches so it makes uh, 100 millimeters and it's called real bluegill so their suggestion for using it is through humps ledges open water riprap points stocks rocks and trees they suggest that you use braided line with this because it floats. Um, I still fish it with a like a shorter fluorocarbon leader. And that's just because the water is so clear here and the fish are pretty finicky. Um, yeah, so walking the bait and you just twitch it kind of like a popper. Just you don't get the same effect of the whooshing. From the front of it but no it's it's a pretty cool looking bait um definitely can't wait to use this all right uh next up let's turn that page number two a popper i love poppers a steel shad popper um 610 medium power 30 pound braid again um, you can also use mono with this, it says. I'm still going to run it with a fluorocarbon leader. And then, okay, so with a popper, you fish over open water, wrap rocks, trees, around all kinds of things. So the thing that I like most about poppers, and because this is a larger popper, larger as in size, this is Rota 110, I think, probably. And it doesn't say actually it's kind of really annoying that it doesn't say it's probably three eighths of an ounce half of an ounce maybe nine sixteenths again <clears throat> um so yeah this is definitely like a 110 for like four and a quarter inch bait four and a half inch bait um the little mouth on it's a little bit smaller than i would like for a popper but you still get that effect out the front of it bass love that and this color pattern is wild. Um, <clears throat> with that on there, that reflectiveness, when it pops in the water, it does all kinds of rolling around as it's relaxing back into the water. Well, it was right in my finger. <laughs> um, so it's picking up a lot of light and it's distributing that light. And you're just going to be like, pop, let it sit. Or you go pop, 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 sit, pop, 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 sit. Especially if you have like a small cross current or like a small breeze, you can pretty much just cast this out there and just pop, 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 let it drift a little bit, pop, 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 let it drift a little bit, pop, 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 let it drift a little bit. Poppers are super effective. And this one's got a great rattle. All right, next up, turn this page here. <clears throat> All right, walking the frog. Okay, so you get frogs, you get grass, lily pads, everything. Everybody knows the best place is to throw a frog. I wouldn't necessarily throw one open, open water, like, uh, maybe like in the middle of a cove or just off of some 
like a lily pad area or like a grassy bank or something like that. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily just throw it open, open water. Throw it on maps or mats, uh, riprap, docks, basically all the other places. Um, yeah, let's check out this frog. And if you guys don't know about the frog trick, I'll tell you guys about the frog trick. Let's get this guy out here. Almost all frogs. Yeah, so this one's not too bad. Um, but the frog trick is, what you do with the frog is when you first get them, you throw them in hot water and you boil them for a little bit to just kind of make the rubber just that much softer. This one's not too bad, but I've had frogs in the past that were just way too firm and it made that hook up ratio harder because you have to wait for it to take it and you have to set the hook like it would be like a Texas rig or something like that because they're not really going to hook themselves on that. Um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend boiling your frogs and then after you cast them and everything because you notice how this one was kind of pushed up when it came out of the box like that. Push it down just a little bit, and it'll help with that hookup ratio. Um, but yeah, no, frogs frogs are sweet. And I think the only white frog-like lure I have is actually a little white mouse that I got a long, long time ago. <clears throat> that might actually, my, my mouse might actually be a bait that I borrowed from my dad when I was a kid. Um, turn the page. So, here we go. Walking bait. That's going to be our monster bass bait. And this thing has got some sick colors. But, same same idea. You can fish around humps, ledges, brush piles, open water. I agree with open water on this one. Uh, <coughs> um, rip wrap, points, rocks, trees, all that stuff. You're going to be a 610 medium moderate, uh, Braid again recommended, 7.3 gear ratio. Um, and it is just. So, with walking baits, when you retrieve it, you're going to treat it sort of like a jerk bait, kind of. Except for you're going to do like little bit micro bounces. And you just kind of want it to kind of just twitch across the surface. So, think about a jerk bait, but just imagine on the surface. So this bait's about four and a half inches. Um, you got your red hook in front to try to entice them to hit the front, but it's also got a feather tail, which I, especially with top water, a feathered tail is a big thing for me. I just prefer it. Um, with that pattern on the sides, it's gonna do just like our this popper from Steel Shad. It's gonna reflect all that light as it's bouncing around and twitching like that. Um, and this white color, I think is gonna be really effective because almost majority of fish in most areas all have white bellies or they have a lighter colored belly, um, especially with shad, but we don't have shad up here, but we have rainbows and rainbows have that beautiful white belly. So I think this is going to be a great bait up here. Um, let's turn the page again. Alright, so you got your buzz toad. And they gave us the Yamamoto's. So you're going to rig this up kind of like a Texas rig. I actually don't think I have an EWG hook just chilling up here on my desk for once. But you got these curly tails. And you're going to throw this weightless. You could throw a weight on it, but... It's not really necessary. Um, this what color is this? Yama frog, black cherry. This is a pretty decent color. Super dark red. Got a lot of red flake in it. Um, yeah, just throw it up for Texas rig style. You can see the indentation here on the back, a little bit of an area. So if you wanted to use like a strength, uh, straight shank hook. A, you can tuck it right inside there. Um, I would even be willing to throw like a larger flipping hook on this just so you've got that angle of the hook coming up. Um, but yeah, these are definitely 
destroying in the bag. These will be fun for summer. And there we go. Um, toad fishing, sick to braid, lure up. So this is floating top water, obviously. But I would not be afraid of sticking like maybe like a tiny little bitty bit of weight in this um, just to make it sink a little bit. Or you could even use these as trailers. Kind of like the old, um, where are they, the pork rind plug things. Great for that. All right, flip through, next page. All right, buzz baits. I love buzz baits. Let's open this thing up. White, I love white, that's like my go-to color. Okay, so this is 3 8 ounce buzz bait from Sonic Baits. Um, well, Sonic Buzz from Razor. Pretty sweet. Alright. It's all about that chatter and it's all about that topwater blurble. So, the other really cool thing, which they actually is really neat that they bring it up in here, is you bend the blade up. Well, not the blade up, but the blade down towards the bait. Oh, hold on, let me bend it just a little bit more. A little bit less. So the goal is to make that clack against there. I still got that a little bit close. Yeah, there we go. So it just barely clips it, making just more noise. Buzz baits are supposed to be loud, obnoxious, and just obnoxious, loud. Or you can run it not clacking. Either way, buzz baits are a solid pick for summer. I actually need to start digging out all my buzz baits and add them to my normal tackle. Um, really excited about top water coming back. All right, so moving on. But I mean, you can throw a buzz bait anywhere you want. Just don't throw it in the lily pads because it's not going to get to buzz. I think that's kind of obvious which ones of these are lily pad friendly and which ones aren't lily pad friendly. So then you've got your lunar phases back here for the whole entire next two months, June and July. And got more information from Eric Galasso, Epic Eric and your community spotlight and next month is going to be Tokyo rig and so much more so that's super exciting um, got my golden ticket set that over there um, what else is it? oh they did give me WG hooks for the Yamamoto okay so we're gonna rig that up here in a second just so I can show you guys but I think everybody knows and understands that 10% um, off gift card for having my membership, Rising Glide, and oh, Monster Bass is doing a fishing tournament, and if you're a subscriber, you get into the tournament for free, otherwise I think it's 25 bucks or something like that, or you can get your Monster Bass box for next month, get the card and all the information, plus I think you get like $10 off the box or something like that, they sent me an email about it. Or I saw a video about it. But either way, it's cool. And I'm guessing because there's three codes on there. So you're going to have to have this card to measure. And they're going to probably do it in the next three months of summer. So July, August, and September? Maybe they'll start it for June? Not really sure. I need to check into that. I'd flip this over, but it's got my code on the back of it. That's, yeah. I, I probably shouldn't just give out the code. But this Rising Glides, this is pretty cool. This is a dope sticker. I I got one of these before, but I gave it to one of my buddies because he's this huge swim bait guy. And that's it. All right. Well, let's just get back to this real quick. Rig this up because these are cool. <clears throat> I think I've got these in a green pumpkin, actually. It's either a green pumpkin or maybe it's like a... It's probably green pumpkin. Let's be honest. If you if you need a go-to color for anything, almost swear anywhere. Green pumpkin, but so it's got little bit eyes up here. So you know the difference between the top and the bottom. Besides the fact the bottom has that giant divot, 
so you're going to feed that in there like a regular Texas rig. Okay, get to the shank part. Go through the bottom. Bam, just like that. Pull it up around. Okay, so you'd already have that tied in your line. Pull it over your line tie, just like that. So it's all hidden and it's all out of the way. It doesn't catch on weeds, whatever. See where it's going to come through the body? So right about there, by the, oh, between the front part of the little appendages, little legs, come right through. I oh, was pretty close to center. And then you text post that hook. Well, it wasn't that great of a job, but close enough. That'd catch fish. There you go. All ready to go. There. Perfect. That's what you want to do. That's what you want. But yeah, this this topwater box, this is pretty solid. I'm really happy with this. And I like the fact that I, I feel like Monster Bass, every time they send something that's supposed to be fished like a Texas rig or like a Carolina rig, I feel like they always send a couple EWGs or worm hooks or whatever you need, which is super thoughtful because you don't always get jig heads or stuff like that in certain other boxes that I talk about on my channel that drives me insane almost every single time I open a box. By that, I just specifically mean this one. Not giving me jig heads for the tiny little stuff. I mean, I bought the Trout Magnet jig set, but that's kind of not the point. But, um... No, the Monster Bass box is great. The only thing that I almost sort of don't like about it, but I, I do really like about it, is that there's a theme for the box every month. Like, I really, really love that they have a theme, and this is so well thought through. I mean, this is this is every pretty much every way that you can throw top water. Um, I kind of wish the popper was smaller. But I've also, I don't think I have a larger popper like this, so I'll have to see how this works out. But, yeah, I'm used to, like, the regular two and a half, three inch poppers with a big, huge mouth. Um, too bad I don't have one. Uh, do I? No. No, I don't actually have one in here. Sometimes I leave extra random baits laying up here. But, no, this is, this is solid. This is the colors, everything. This is perfect for summer, and this is perfect for summer, especially up here in my area. Um, if you get this box, there's a really good chance that whatever comes in your box isn't going to be identical to mine, because I signed up for the regional box, and I believe that means that my box should be designed to fish in my region, which is the Pacific Northwest, which I agree with. This All this... Is gonna work great and I I'm glad I got more of these these are expensive Yamamoto uh, baits are really really good really really soft really really kind of expensive for what they are but they are really really good um, but no definitely the values here the information that's in here is solid and there's not really any reason to deviate from the information that's in here, except for because I fish clear water, I'm not going to fish braid, straight braid on most of my top water stuff. You guys can blow me up in the comments for that. I, that's, that's fine. It's not that big of a deal to me. Um, <laughs> when I say our water's clear, I mean like a lot of the lakes I fish, we're talking 12 feet of visibility on a Sunday day or more clear um, and they don't have clear braid yet and the like the the nice green braids they still shell up you'll still scare them off with nice green braid um, but yeah no I can't wait to try this stuff out um, one thing I would I am thinking about really doing is taking my elite bass box and putting it head to head with my monster bass box it's kind of an unfair fight because there's a lot of variety in here while everything in here is specifically top water maybe i'll flip back through my last couple monster bass boxes 
and I'll grab a comparable a comparable assortment to my elite box and just see kind of which one fishes better um Oh, it'd be fun. Um, really hoping this rain stops. I don't know if you guys have been watching the weather, but it, uh, well, it was 61 today, and it's June 15th currently. So, yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> definitely a cold and rainy day. I think this is our wettest spring in. I think they said like two decades or something like that. Um, May was the wettest May I think that they said that they had ever had on records. So yeah, yeah. If the floods in Yellowstone are telling you anything, yeah, we had record snowfall up in the passes, and all that's rushing down our rivers. I mean, we're not having blowouts like the folks over by Yellowstone, but it's been wet. Water levels are up. Um, water temperatures have been just crazy, especially in my area. Um, sometimes you'll go to the lake and it'll be like 60 degrees still, which is cold compared to most of the rest of the country, um, right now. But there, there's been a couple times, like last week, I went to a tiny little lake and it rained most of the week and I just stopped in for a little bit of my kayak and I turned my... Uh, depth finder on and it was like 51 degrees the fish are kind of they, they, they're kind of acting like they're confused um one of my buddies fishes out on the peninsula he's not having those types of issues um it's just lower and apparently somehow magically drier where he goes fishing so plus it doesn't help that he gets to fish like every day but and i stuck on like weekends and after work because the commute is no joke. Um, but yeah, no, this is this is this month's Monster Bass Box. I'm going to stop rambling because I swear I do this every single video. But go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. Really helps me out. Um, I love opening stuff like this. And I know my girlfriend is not half as excited as I am to open things. So, I'm hoping at least you guys get excitement out of this. I mean, there are, are, as of right now, 61 of you out there. And I think I'm going to do a, give, <clears throat> a giveaway when I hit 100. So, when I get hit 100 subscriptions, I think I'm going to make an announcement video here probably this weekend. And come up with something for a giveaway prize. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because, like, if you guys keep loving this content, I'll keep doing this. And I'm definitely going to get out there and get some fishing content. It's got to dry up. This weekend's supposed to be cold. I think it's supposed to be, like, mid-50s all weekend. And cloudy. But I'm still going to try this out. And if I get some solid time, I'll film some stuff. Because topwater blow-ups are about the coolest thing in the world. And that's the other thing I need to get better at is filming content when I go out fishing and not just catching a nice fish and then putting my camera on or not having my camera on at all. So we'll try it out. We'll see how it goes. I got a lot to work on to be better at doing this. Um, but yeah, thanks for the support guys and tight lines. I'll catch you later.